Good morning from Taipei. For breakfast, let's go get some noodles. This is one of the most famous places to get rice noodles. Oh, I love Taiwanese rice noodles. This is such a staple here in Taiwan, and this place is one of the best places to do it. Also, they're so nice here. So every bowl costs about oh, 50 Taiwanese yuan. So about a buck 60 in today's conversion, making this very affordable bowl of breakfast noodle. And they brought over a little um, lemon drink for you to kind of cleanse your palate beforehand. Mm. And this thing, see the giant oysters in there? My bowl alone, I got four Good sized oysters. Also, there's large intestines, all served in a gooey bowl of rice noodles. You can add some chilies too if you want, and I definitely recommend some vinegar and some pepper. But before you do that, you give it a taste. That's so good. And they make it so garlic too. Rice noodles really, really soft. The broth is thick and rich and jam packed full of yum. You taste the seafood, you taste the umaminess. Because it's so rich, I like to add some chilies. Definitely adding vinegar will make it even better because the vinegar is going to balance out the richness really, really well. White pepper is what you should be adding in soups. Oh my gosh, so good. Now it's not only savory, and deep and rich, but it's also got that nice fermented vinegary flavor. You get the spice from the chilies and also the spice from the white powder as well. The bites with the oysters deliver such an impactful seafood flavor. And then switch it up, take a bite with some large intestines. Those are my favorite bites. It's so snappy and clean. They clean their large intestines really well here. No funky business. Mm, the textures of the oysters and the large intestines are so different as well. Mm. This is such a scrumptious bowl of noodles. Luckily, I got a second bowl. That was so good. So today is a jam-packed food day. After this, going for lunch at the most popular, the most highly rated, all you can eat hot pot, probably in all of Taiwan. Then tonight, finally heading back to a Taiwanese night market. I think the last time I was there, maybe four or five years ago. And before heading to lunch, a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. I've been talking about and recommending Surfshark VPN for a number of years now. It's something I've used pretty much every single day ever since I installed it years ago. And guys, if you're not using a VPN service right now to protect your digital information, I highly recommend you do. Nowadays, of course, so much of our personal information is online. There's so many people trying to gain access to it. You got data aggregators who's trying to collect your personal information to sell to marketing companies or people stealing your personal information, putting on a dark web. I even know someone who had their IP address exposed and somebody was able to access that and see where they were in real time. This is scary stuff. So what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. And what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts and secures your personal information before it goes over the internet. So people who you don't want having access to your private info, they're not gonna have access to it. Also Surfshark has something called Surfshark Alerts. So let's say someone's trying to get access to something like your email you're gonna get notified right away. Also on the entertainment side, you can use Surfshark VPN to switch your digital location to another country and be able to check out that country's movies and TV shows on their Netflix. Or vice versa, if you're traveling abroad, you want access to your US streaming services. Like I watch a lot of Blue Bloods, The Rookie. You can use Surfshark VPN to change your location back to the US so you actually gain access to the streaming services that you pay for. Or just basic functions. Right now, even to pay my mortgage, a lot of bank websites don't even work when you're trying to access them from overseas. So you can use Surfshark VPN to solve those issues as well. So if you want to give it a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Mikey. You get 83% off your order plus three additional months for free and try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it for whatever reason, get your money back. All right, let's go see if this hot pot place lives up to the hype. This is one of the most incredible hot pot buffets I've ever seen. All the ingredients are laid out, so you just go grab everything yourself. There's at least five, six different types of sliced beef. There's giant prawns. There's scallops on the shell. There's crab. There's also gnarly items like grain. Pretty good looking dessert bar. And the drink section looks like something straight out of a 7-Eleven. It's like they moved the 7-Eleven drink section over to here. Actually, I think they have more drink selection then a 7-Eleven. So this place, 30 US dollars, two hour time limit, and they stick by it. So I gotta start eating.
there's a bunch of soup bases to choose from and I got their signature spicy soup base which looks amazing. A lot of heat, there's also two kinds of tofu inside floating around so you can eat that too. I got that in the scallop, so it's a seafood scallop soup base. Mmm, with a little sweetness with the Napa cabbage. So I got different types of beef in here. There's about five different cuts that I took from the just the beef section alone. Stick it all into the spicy side. Rest, put it to the scallop side. Look at these giant pieces of seafood. All the seafood, I'm gonna put on the seafood side just to enhance that broth. Look at this. This is crazy. Scallop. Yogurt drink will go really well with this buffet. I'm so excited about this. Mmm, I want hot pot. It's on a whole different level. First of all, that meat is so tender. And they have everything from English to a red card to American fatty beef. Every bite so far melts in your mouth. This is a giant crawfish, by the way. Break it open, suck the hip part in. Wow, look how much meat is in this. Oh, that is so good, literally. Tastes like a little lobster. That meat is so tender and sweet. Oh, that's amazing. There's a couple things about this place you gotta be aware of. First of all, you only get one food plate. So you take this one plate up each time you wanna get more ingredients. So I guess that eliminates waste and dishwashing. Don't love that? That's definitely something I never experienced before. Also I noticed, giant piece of blood in the spicy broth. Scallops. Mm, that's so sweet. And this is the scallop that came on a half shell. Mm, that's even better. So far, loving this buffet. Ah, pig's feet. Pig's feet at hot pot. And all that collagen has stewed into the pot. That's gonna make that broth taste extra good. Mm, super gelatinous. Here they give you a trace of minced seafood. So this is a, a shrimp paste that you dump it into the hot pot and it becomes a meatball. These are so good, so bouncy and sweet. The danger is about that drink selection. I just want to keep going back for drinks. Wow, my mouth's on fire. Luckily, milk tea. This buffet is so much fun. I think I am running out of time now. It's gonna be a pretty big food day, so I'm gonna stop there, get some fruit. Look at this, sour sap. Mmm, wow, ah, so good. Tastes like a cross between a lychee and an apple. That feels really good on my burning tongue. Almost at the night market, so tonight going to Linjiang Night Market. Like I said, it's been a while. This is so exciting. First meal is gonna be here. I think this store is selling roast pig. Wow, that sounds so crispy. First food item at this night market. I walk by the stall and all I hear is crunch, crunch, crunch. And this vendor is making crispy pork belly and it looks so good. Oh, it smells good too. The skin of this pork belly looks so airy. And then you get some raw onions and chilies and cumin sprinkled on top. Look at this. You see the glistening fat of the meat and all that juice. And most importantly, the airiness of the skin looks ridiculous. That's some really, really good stuff. Just listen. Mm. That skin, that's all a crunch. Not a heavy crunch, a very light, like a bag of pork rind kind of crunch. When I'll start feeling like it's too much, take a bite of onion, cleanse your palate, and put the next piece in your mouth. The juice from the pork belly was leaking out of the corner of my mouth. Also goes really well with the sweet, juicy onions. Such a good palate cleanser. This roast pig has one of the airiest, crispiest skin I've had on any roast pig. That's the ultimate crunch right there. This is a good place. One thing about a good pork belly though, that makes you really thirsty. Luckily, this is Taiwan. There's bubble tea places pretty much everywhere. Also, bubble tea in Taiwan, it's only about a dollar.
fresh steamed rice cakes. Got chocolate, brown sugar, and sesame. These are so fluffy. The rice cakes are fluffy. They're a little mochi ish with that subtle, sweet, fragrant rice flavor. This is so delicious. Out of the three, the brown sugar, the sesame, the chocolate. I think I like sesame the most. It's sweet, nutty, with a nice sesame aroma. Such a light and airy dessert. This is a classic at Taiwanese night markets. A little puffy sweet potato ball. Those are so good, so deliciously airy. Mm, it's like a crispy sweet potato air pocket. And it's so mochi as inside. It's a must have when you go to night markets in Taiwan. Actually, I have a recipe of this, so I'll link it down below for you guys if you want to try to make it at home. So this is a suan la fin, a spicy sour noodles. So this is about 100 Taiwanese dollars and you get a lot. Look at pork belly, minced meat, peanuts, wood here. And underneath all that, super springy mundane noodles. It smells so good. Mmm, I like that a lot. Super sour and spicy like it's meant to be. Bunch of veggies in here, cabbage. The texture is also spot on. You got the crispy cabbage, crispy wood here. Crispy peanuts, and that just makes these noodles taste even more bouncy. Or as they say in Taiwan, super QQ. Mm, as about as bouncy of a noodle as you can find anywhere. And like I said, you get a lot of stuff. There's tons of meat in here, tons of veg. And when you put this all together in one bite with the crunch and the chewiness and the meat, that makes a delicious bowl of noodles. Also, she was nice enough to uh, give me a bowl of soup with it. So you can pour the soup inside, mix it together. Wow, that meat soup mixed with that sour and spicy sauce basically changed this to a whole different dish. I'm so glad I'm eating this not in the summer because this definitely will heat your whole body up. I would definitely recommend if you come here to the stall, Get the dry noodles so you get a taste of that. Add the soup in, get a taste of that. Personally, I think I like the soup version better. This is delicious. This is roasted sugar cane juice. And the reason they roast the sugar cane is to bring out the sweetness and flavor and it adds a bit of smoke to it as well. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, you taste that smoke, 100%. A little bit of a caramelized flavor to it. It's so different than a regular sugar cane juice. That's so good. Another musket item at Taiwanese Stand Markets, a giant chicken cutlet. This thing fresh out of the fryer. This is not your typical piece of fried chicken. These are ginormous pieces of chicken. Look at this. This is like, like a tamer size. I've seen them so big, you can hide your whole head behind them. Outer skin, super crispy, covered in chilies. This is the spicy one. And I gotta tell you, it smells so good. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. This is so juicy. I and mean, look at this. You guys see all the juice coming out of the chicken? Crunchy skin, super, super juicy meat. Beautiful seasoning. Be really careful about into this. Every single piece comes out freshly fried. Mm. Oh. You definitely can risk injury eating this. I mean, it'd be worth it, but be careful. Also, this giant thing. About three US dollars. Crispy, juicy, spicy, a little sweet, good value, and extremely satisfying. Again, must get at a Taiwanese night market. Sesame spicy corn. This is so good. Wow. Barbecue corn. You taste that nice char, the nice seasoning. There's some chilies on here, some roasted sesame seeds. This is not your typical pop and sweet corn. It's more of an Asian style corn, so it's more starchy. And it works really, really well with all the savory seasoning on here. Mmm, this is fantastic.
Uh, or sweet potato balls. Oh, this one's so good. I think this one is bigger than the last one. Bigger, airier. Found a place that served little seared bowels. These are piping hot. Mmm. No, oh, this is delicious. Super fluffy, airy dough. Big juicy filling on the inside. These are delicious little buns. Yeah, super juicy too. One thing you gotta be careful about eating this, they give you a couple of bamboo skewers to eat this with. This will trip all over your hands like I already did mine. Also, don't put the whole thing in your mouth like I just did. Oh, it's burning hot. Oh, it's really good though. Oh, this looks good. Grilled oysters. Heck yeah. Taiwan night markets are also a really good place to get seafood. Look at these plum clams. Oh my god. They're so sweet and plump and juicy. Not a single grain of sand in these. They're fresh, they're snappy. Really nice burst of subtle brininess. I think these are just cooked in their own juice and they're amazing. Wow, that sweet aftertaste. That's lingering on my tongue after one of these goes down the hatch. This is a really good place. How they clean this so well. I don't think I really ever had a clam without at least getting a, at least like a single grain of sand or something. But this clean as a whistle. That was so good. I got a larger water. Best grilled clams I had in a long time. This is some kind of uh, seafood soup. Whoa. With wine. It's good. I feel like you can get drunk eating this. This is a really sweet prom. Chase that with some of the seafood soup. There's definitely a lot of liquor in here. I think this one is just okay. Last food of the night. This looks really, really awesome. Mochi balls over shaved ice. Three mochi balls over shaved ice. This is actually pretty ingenious because those of you who had mochi balls know they are burning hot. Put some ice on there. Now they make for a delicious icy treat. This is a really great way to eat mochi balls. This establishment definitely run by food geniuses. They also put some syrup, kui hua syrup, into the shaved ice. So the shaved ice itself is yummy already. Of course, made even better by the awesome mochi balls. Sesame is my favorite flavor. Sweet and chewy. This dessert is so yummy, but it's really hard to eat this during those hot summer months. This just makes it all better. Mm, fantastic final food item at this night market. I'm so happy to be back here. So happy to just be walking around, surrounded by the food, the people, soaking up this atmosphere. Taiwan was the first country I I'd been to when I started doing food videos outside of the US. And you know, I still remember coming here for the first time, going to the night markets. It's an experience that always stayed with me. So this is a place I really treasure. And as always, all the place I went to, listen down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.